Hi, this is Ingo Tu. Welcome to Lela Podcast. This is Shimika Komnigo. I have a special guest this week. I continue my conversation with Mahati, a visual artist based out of Lusaka. You will find part one of my interview with him in the description box, as well as links to previous interviews. Lela Podcast is available on your favorite podcast streaming service, as well as on youtube make sure you follow lena podcast on instagram twitter and facebook i'm always always very happy to hear from the listeners and the viewers of my podcast sit back and enjoy this episode thank you who've done animations mm-hmm. recently like they've, especially during the pandemic because they had to use yeah, people and like visualizers like, yeah. they couldn't go around to film actual videos yeah so when when yeah. i saw this i was like the song is great the collab is great but the visual mm. i was like oh my god it just hurt my yeah. eyes but anyways i just want to say like that's another form of of interpretation yeah. and the artist put it out obviously yeah. his fans mm. were very happy I, i'm sure i'm just the only one i'm the odd potato in the in the yeah. sack of potatoes that you know that <laughs> and a, a, a different opinion but this is very true yeah. about art about everything that is created and put out there's always varying opinions and i really really appreciate that you've given us that perspective because yes yeah. we say photographer but i think it's good for you mm-hmm. to also say as a visual artist i love mm-hmm. i love that yeah. you see this as mm-hmm. a visual artist yeah. my work okay so because yeah. i want to stop I talking think people get it a bit confusing yes yeah they tend to forget to say as a photographer you're an artist as well you are you you are just giving people art that you think is perfect in your eyes and you you're leaving it to them to interpret it for themselves yeah. i couldn't have said it better because yeah. that's also that's also another thing because i'll be like yeah i spoke with a photographer no a visual yeah. artist and um artist. even yeah. You know, like your work and Colos is is very mm. dis- is very different. She's doing mm. portraits now, Perfect, and yeah. oh my god, it's yeah. just so beautiful. Lucky but lighting, it, such amazing, yeah. Exactly, but then your work, yeah. like I said, I spoke of the show Majosi portrait. Mm. Like she's in she's in movement, she's in motion, she's living yeah. the music that she's singing, and you capture that. Yeah. You know, I can't yeah. imagine what song she was singing. You would remember, you would know, <laughs> maybe you wouldn't. But like you, you look at it and you're like, wow, it's it's also very beautiful. But anyway, yeah. I, I, and focus on the question, okay? <laughs> how many, um, oh, sorry, wait, mm. sure, okay. How many sessions do you do uh, per month, for example? Per month. Well, yeah. uh, so that's, uh, that's relative. Okay. So it it depends if it's uh, if it's peak season or if it's not peak season. Okay. So yeah, if it's peak season, we've got events coming in, uh, like every every weekend. I think mm-hmm. it should be should be quite a substantial number of events that I do every every month if it's peak season. Okay. So yeah. when when yeah. when is that? When is like peak season? Definitely not during the rainy season because nobody's going to go to an event if it's raining. <laughs> But yeah. <laughs> you you say you tell yeah. me, tell me when when is yeah. your peak season for example when are you busiest yeah uh, usually back then it used to be between um ep- uh, April May okay April May are the peak seasons yeah and now March is coming to play as well and also okay. there's August September October yeah and November that, that's our summer yeah that's the time yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. so, a lot so of- that time yeah. So okay. that time is quite busy. And December as well. December is, is good as well. Ah, yeah. End of the year. Yeah. Then, End of the year, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So walk us through a standard mm. shoot for an event. How do you prep? Do you go alone? Do you have an assistant? What gear are you taking? Okay. You know, just quickly. Okay. So my standard... Uh, even the, the way it starts, right? Mm-hmm. Mm, let's say I've already, I've already had a briefing with the, with the, with organizers. They've told me what they're trying to achieve. Yeah. They've, they've showed me their mood board and they've told me exactly what they want to get out of the, out of the event when they're done. Yeah. So what, what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll make my storyboard as well for the key points, yeah. what I'm going to focus on. Yeah. Yeah. Like maybe they say, okay, you know what? We want to get pictures of people having fun. 
we want our products to show when the people are having fun. Uh, maybe they say, okay, for this event, we're focusing on people's hair, the color of the hair. Maybe we want to focus on the on the people's outfits. Ah. So now, yeah. So now ask them, okay, what is the distinct color which is going to be there for the for the for the outfits that I should mm -hmm. look out for? Yeah. So when they tell me all those things, then I'll I'll write them down. And after I write them down, I'll try to visualize what kind of images that I'll I'll try to get out of them without it making without it looking so scripted. Ah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, so like make it as natural as possible for them. Okay. And uh, without forgetting the sponsors in the what in the images as well, if there are any sponsors at all. Okay. So now, yeah. So once you figure out that, then then you can get into in, into setting up your your cameras. Mm -hmm. Get your get your batteries charged. Get your cameras charged. Wow. Also, it's my ritual before going for any shoot. I yeah. think it it calms me down. I try to clean my my camera ah. i clean it and it's yeah i clean it as much as i can and then i get into that into that photography zone okay then i'll know that yeah so afterwards when we're done when when i'm shooting mm -hmm. i'll try and make sure that i i take out all the all the all the all the things that i put on my storyboard that they that they require me to do yes yeah i try by all means to get them out of there as much as possible so yeah. that I can have enough time now to be as creative as I can. Okay. Yeah, with uh, the, the different shots. Maybe I'm trying to, to experiment with something else. Yeah. So that I can incorporate it to the other images as well when, when I'm doing post-production. Okay. Yeah. I love I love this response. That's another one where, like, yeah. I know, <laughs> you know, like, young people are going to be like, oh, mm. I don't know, I'm finishing mm. university soon, or I'm in university, mm. I would like to do something, and... You yeah. know, I, I would like for them to come and listen to this and listen and listen to just the to the breakdown you've given, you know, because um yeah. personally, I mean I, I I I have a sense because I interviewed Colo and she's she's doing photography yeah. for work, you know, like you mm. have to listen to the client brief, blah de blah. Yeah. I had no idea about this, but but I, I love yeah. all the yeah. Yeah. professional aspects that you've put on it. Okay. Mm. Thank you very yeah. much. So who would be your ideal client? What would make working with them 100% satisfactory apart from, of course, mm. the money? Um, <laughs> so who? Yeah. Somebody who understands what they're looking for. Okay. Yeah, somebody, somebody who just says, okay, for, for us, we're looking for someone to give us these kind of images. They give you a very distinctive brief where they they also give you their their their, their guidelines. Yeah. Let's say every, every company has got the way they, they do their things. Yeah. Yeah, you get it. So maybe for example, maybe maybe um I'm I'm shooting maybe let's say for example, maybe it's for a toothbrush company, right? Mm hmm so for them, they're going to tell me, okay, you know what? We don't take our pictures if our if our toothbrush is only being shown halfway. If we can't see their branding, those little subtle kind of details okay. and the and the color palettes that they use, it's it's the devil in the detail that really makes the job easy. Okay. Um, they tell okay, you know what? Uh, for our products, we don't want our products to be clustered with so many things. Mm. We want our products to be facing this this direction. Yeah. This much of lighting. Yeah. Those little kind of details are the things that make your job quite easy when you're working. Even for events as well, when they tell you exactly what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. We don't want clutter in the images. We want people to to be having a good time. Don't be in people's faces. Don't make it look like it's too scripted. <laughs> make it make it look like people are having a good time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. We are looking for these little things in there. So that's what makes the job easy apart from getting paid afterwards. Okay, yeah. of course, but of course, yeah. of course, of course. Yeah. I, l I love that you, yeah. I love that you gave um, this detail because I mean, people might be wondering, mm. but you will go to Hattie's uh, Instagram, mm. go to his Instagram because then you have like yeah. a breakdown of the kind of mm. images that he, he uh, photography that he does. But then, um, mm -hmm. you know, then you will see like what what he means, what he's reflecting. I'm sure with the different clients he's been working with, that that was the case. Mm -hmm. They sat down, they talked, 
So thank you for that breakdown. Okay. What, um, I think you've already given a few of these, but maybe you could just give us a new one. What is your best business tip for photographers just starting out their career or business as a photographer? Okay. So if you're starting, first let's talk on the, on the career side. Yeah. If you're starting it as a career, take as many pictures as you can. Don't say I have to get this fancy over the top camera. Just start with your just start with with your phone. Just take as many pictures as you can and learn as much as you can. YouTube is there. Yeah. YouTube is where we learned everything. YouTube is where the whole skill came from. Yeah. And yeah. just don't be shy to ask as well. Yeah. Ask the people. Yeah. Don't don't be shy to to network with the people. Yeah. Go to the events. Talk to the people. Be in their face. <laughs> yeah, be in their face, talk to them, yeah, be eager to learn a, a new skill from them. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And from the business side, yeah. From from the business side of it, when you decide that you're going to take your your craft professionally. Yeah. If you're either a freelancer, if if you're a freelancer that is, yeah. make sure that you register your company. Ah. That's very important. Yeah. Yeah, that's very important, yeah. Make sure that you've got the right documentation for you to support it as, as a, a company, business. which is, yeah, as a business, which is quite easy to do here. Yeah, it's, yeah. It can be done online. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can I be love done online. Yeah, it can be done <laughs> online. It's easy. <laughs> I, love, I love that you said that yeah. because, um, first of all, about the learning, the approaching people, not being afraid to ask, yeah. start with, you yeah. know, like, you don't have to buy fancy equipment just to take as many photos, no. learn as much. I mean, that's that's so valuable, you know, for creatives in general. Those of us who make like video no. content also, mm -hmm. I always say to people, they ask me, so what would you tell someone who's starting out uh, on YouTube? Just start with your phone. I mean, yes, I've, been, yes, phone. Just I've been doing YouTube for a while now. I'm not the biggest YouTuber, yeah. but I still <laughs> use my phone. I use Soon my enough, phone. Yeah because it works it just it puts out the yeah, image that works. i want yes i'm learning yeah. other things i edit i do i do the sound i do all these other things yeah. because i was chatting with my brother and he was like oh the amount of things that you do you know you can't yeah. um fit all of those on your on your banner you know because you're the editor mm -hmm. you're the base for that. <laughs> same with you you're yeah, your accountant your equipment yeah. cleaning guy, your the yeah. clients booking, marketing, yeah. you know. Everything, yeah, marketing, everything, yeah. Exactly. So yeah. thank you for that breakdown. So I'm going to yeah. ask you, I have I, I have a few more minutes to to get this done. Yeah. Okay. Um in your free time, what kind of uh yeah. photography do you like to shoot? And which ones yeah. do you avoid? Um I don't think I avoid anything in my free time. I try to experiment as much as I can. Yeah. Yeah. I try to learn. Sorry. I try to learn as much as I can in my yeah. free time. Yeah. But usually in my free time, most of the times when I'm shooting, it's it's usually portraits. Oh, okay. I enjoy shooting portraits, yeah. I enjoy shooting mm -hmm. portraits and uh and landscape as well. Okay. Brilliant. Yeah, landscape as well, yeah. Mm. Zambia is so beautiful. That's, show off, show off amazing. that landscape, but then also the beautiful <laughs> people of Zambia, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks for that. Um, again, people mm. go to Hati's Instagram. You will yeah. see, you will see why I chose him to be a guest mm. of my podcast. <laughs> okay. Um, so just to wind up, okay, where yeah. I've mentioned a few times and I've said to people, find the links in the description box, but I think it's better mm. if it comes from you, where can my okay. listeners and viewers find you on social media and so they could check out your work, ETC? Okay. Ah, okay. Uh, on, on Twitter, the handle is at hati underscore 24. Mm -hmm. That's H A R T I underscore twenty four. Same handle on Instagram as well. Okay. And my Facebook is in the is in active. Okay. But you, but also you can check out my portfolio as well at uh, Hati Photography. Yes. Dot my dot com. Okay. Yeah. I will have the yeah. links in the description box. Um, yeah. that's for everyone that's that's been watching and listening. Um, that was my interview with Hattie. Um, just make sure you check the description box 
watch this till the end yeah. and subscribe, download the podcast episode, and we will catch you in the Thanks next Wulela podcast episode. Thanks to everyone who's tuned into the podcast and make sure you follow me on all, on, the, on all the socials and you follow the podcast on the socials as well. Thanks. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. And that was my interview with Bahati. And I hope you enjoyed both part one and part two. Remember, you will find links in the description box for part one, as well as links for previous episodes, both available on the podcast, your favorite podcast service, whichever it may be, as well as on my YouTube channel. Thank you for listening and I will catch you in the next episode. Quick reminder, there are lots of reaction videos on my YouTube channel. Please go through and um, have a listen or have a watch and let me know which one is your favorite. If you have any suggestions for artists I could react to or do album reviews to, please don't be shy. Let me know via Instagram, Twitter or Facebook on the Rulela podcast pages. Thanks again and I will catch you in the next episode of Rulela podcast.